Now in this problem we have a ball of clay that is being dropped and is splattering on the ground. So we can go ahead and draw a picture to give us a better sense of what's going on here. Got the ball of clay above the ground. It's going to fall and it's going to splatter on the ground below. And the question actually seems simple, but in fact it's a, it's a little deceptively simple, I think. We are asked to calculate the acceleration of the ball during the time that it, it is in contact with the ground. Now we know the simple definition of acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time interval. Now, a couple of things to note here. Because the ball is splattering on the ground, we can probably guess what its final velocity is going to be. You might want to pause the video and think about that for a moment, but hopefully you came up with the final velocity of the ball equaling zero meters per second. And the question directly gives us the time interval during which the ball is in contact with the ground. That was given to us as 20 milliseconds. Now we'll have to convert that into a standard unit, so we might as well go ahead and do that right now. 20 milliseconds would be 20 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. So we have the final velocity. We've got the time. Of course, what we're missing is the initial velocity. Once we have that, we can simply plug it into the equation for acceleration and we'll be all set. So that's really what the problem turns into, a calculation of the initial velocity of the ball. And some people might say that the initial velocity of the ball is zero since it's being dropped. And that actually turns out to be slightly incorrect because if we plug zero in for the initial velocity and we know the final is zero, we're going to get no acceleration at all. But of course that can't be true. So in fact what happens in the problem like this is the following. The ball is going to be dropped and the moment before it hits the ground, right about here, it's actually traveling with a certain downward velocity. And the velocity at that point right there is going to turn out to be uh, the initial velocity that we're looking for. So we actually have to back up and try to calculate that velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground. That'll be the initial velocity of the ball and the final is going to be zero as we already noted. So how do we actually calculate that initial velocity? Well to do that we have to treat that, and this is the confusing part, we have to treat that initial velocity as actually the final velocity of this part of the ball's motion. Remember the ball starts up here and it's going to fall and we can look at this part of the problem by setting this initial velocity equal to zero. And What we're going to do is calculate the final velocity which will be the velocity just before the ball hits the ground. And whatever that turns out to be, we're going to carry that over and use that as our initial velocity for the portion of the ball's motion when it actually is hitting the ground. So that's our task right now. We're going to set up some different parameters here. So the ball is dropped, which means its initial velocity is zero meters per second. The acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to be calculating the final velocity. And the problem states that the ball falls 15 meters to the ground, so that's going to be the y displacement. But please, please, please note that that's actually negative 15 meters because the ball travels downward relative to where it started, so we have to make sure to include that negative sign right there. So we need one of our kinematics equations to calculate this final velocity. And we'll go ahead and we'll plug in what we know. The ball was dropped as we said, so that's actually zero. Acceleration is negative 9.8. And the y displacement was negative 15. Squeeze that in there. So we'll go ahead and calculate that. And after doing so, it should turn out to be negative 17.15 meters per second. Now, when you did that on your calculator, you might have gotten a positive value for the final velocity. But let's remember that the ball is moving downward. So even if the calculator returns a positive value for the velocity, our knowledge of the problem must tell us 
that the velocity is actually negative. So that's the final velocity of the ball the moment before it hits the ground. And what we're going to do is, is treat that negative 17 meters per second as the initial velocity for the rest of the motion. So we can finally come back over here and, and borrow, so to speak, that negative 17.15 meters per second. We're going to be all set uh, to calculate the acceleration now. We're just going to go ahead and plug our, our parameters in here. So the final velocity is 0 minus the negative 17.15. And since we're subtracting a negative, algebraically it becomes addition. And then we'll divide by the time interval. And you should obtain 857 meters per second as your final answer. Now the acceleration turned out to be positive, so that should actually help you answer part B of the question. You might want to pause the video and reread that part and think about your answer. But if the acceleration turns out to be positive, that means that it's directed upward. So we have 857 meters per second squared, and because it's positive, the acceleration is directed upward.